Um, you know, funny, pretty, yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, you just ask people and they'll say yes or no. I mean, they, we, you know, there's a bunch of actors at different times, you know, for this project or others, you just, you just can't be afraid of, we, we can be very Canadian at times and polite and shy, and if you just sort of ask, it's amazing what people will say, and something like Jill, I mean, Jill responded, was the actually in many ways the easiest. I didn't even realize Jill was Canadian, funny enough, and I was at a party during the film festival a, you know, a year ago in the fall, and talking to a friend, be like, you know, we have to. I need another actress, and because of these sort of like Canadian content regulations, if you're getting public money, and we needed another actor to be Canadian of a certain size role. And he was like, what about Jill Hennessy? And I was like, oh, she's Canadian, and he happened to be friends with her. And uh, and then she saw my first movie and really liked it. And it just, it was just a really simple. And she's just been the most wonderful, accessible. It's actually her birthday today. <laughs> um, <laughs> and. Um, Actually, you know what would be awesome is if I videotape you guys saying happy birthday, Jill. <laughs> no, seriously. You're going to be there right now. Because it actually is her birthday. I, I didn't know that. I just saw it on Facebook. <laughs> I'm actually going to videotape you guys saying, if I can make it work. Oh, is it working? <laughs> Do we have to go outside? <laughs> okay, it's recording. Okay, on three, everybody say happy birthday, Jill. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Jill! That's so awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> uh, and well, because she's from K-Dub, so she'll totally, like, she was like, I was in the Irish parade when I was 10 years old uh, in Listowel. Uh, but, uh, so she'd been here once before, but, uh, yeah, anyway, the long, that long story short, I mean, basically, you know, we just asked, and, you know, Martha Plimpton as well, we just, we just ask, and, you know, asking you shall receive, I guess. Uh, but, you know, the worst anybody will say is no, and generally they're polite about it, so. Yeah. Back there? What inspired you, Ed, to write the script? Um, you know, initially it was just, I guess I, it was meant to be like a bunch of like, disparate, not really connected scenes exploring a murder, in a, the ripple effects of a murder in a small community. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think I, I didn't realize it at the time when I started writing the idea, but, you know, when I, got, I, I first got asked that question when I was doing press for the movie, um, I didn't even realize that this, I started writing it just after there was a double murder on my street. Um, <laughs> And was very aware of suddenly this like loss of innocence of a neighbor. I live in like it was considered like a very safe neighborhood in Toronto, um, or I just moved, but not because of that. But uh, and uh, and like literally, just two people were, like completely randomly shot to death on our street, and there was suddenly this like you know, it's like a, it just completely changes the whole feel of the neighborhood. And and I, I kind of felt like to use a small town as an example as sort of an ecosystem that's a sense of innocence, and then what the ripple effects of that would be. Um, and that, that was just the impetus, and as I started exploring that, you know, a central character, um, and then specifically as, you know, uh, you know, uh, the choice to make him Mennonite, and the, the idea, like, what is it for, you know, a pacifist to be, um, you know, have a history of violence, to be trying to redeem himself in a community of pacifists, and that, that sort of story just, again, just started to evolve, but it, it just kind of, I think it came out of a subconscious, organic response to, you know, that incident. But I, I definitely wasn't, it wasn't a conscious choice to, but, but I do think after the fact, timing was really, it was like I started writing the month after that happened, was not at all aware of it. How did you choose the school? Well, where else could I shoot the movie? It's the best, right? Um, I, you know, I, I wanted, I, I specifically, you know, we wanted somewhere that was not too far from Toronto so I could bring in, like, so we, and we could commute, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I never went home once during one of the shoot prep, so I was here for about, I don't know, eight weeks straight, but, um, uh, you know, it, it just became, you know, we just, we just drove a lot. And it was partly in finding places that could have a hotel, but also had, you know, we wanted to have areas that, um, you know, where there was, say, like, you know, an authentic Mennonite presence, but, you know, in terms of a mix of, you know, more modern progressive as well as old order, but, and then could obviously have things like hotels and could have a bunch of the elements we'd need in a relatively, you know, compact distance. And the more we just sort of drove around, it just really made sense. The fact that, you know, I mean, most of the people actually stayed uh, in Palmerston at the, at the King's Inn, like there was where a lot of the crew stayed, and then some of us stayed at, at the Country Inn, <coughs> and uh, you know, and then obviously just you know, and as well just talking to communities about where we're, we were welcomed, you know, like you know, Pat on the town council was really really helped sort of get us in when we you know twice shut down the main street of town <laughs> um, to drive a house down it and stuff, uh, you know, like we obviously needed some support <laughs> or like at least you know at least we needed to be welcomed to do that. 
Uh, so it just, it, it just kind of happened that way after searching and asking questions and seeing who wanted us. I'm certainly very enthused with the result. I think the town looks beautiful. Any other questions? Is this the first showing of the film since uh, Toronto Film Festival? Um, no, he played a couple of American festivals since. He played uh, in the Hamptons, and uh, we because you know once we sort of had a sales team on board, we we were scheduled to do all these European festivals in the fall, but they canceled all of them because they wanted again because of that whole premiere status thing about once you do like you know it's like it's very focused on your world premiere, your international premiere, European. So they really wanted to wait until we were in a more important festival from a business point of view because they're trying to sell you know to Italy, to Germany, to so Torino, which is this one you know again it's. Not as famous as Canada, et cetera, but from a business point of view, it was a good, because we're in competition, there was sort of a prestigious slot. Um, so they really kind of canceled all these interesting festivals, creatively interesting festivals, but because, you know, as much as it would have been great to premiere, you know, in Stockholm, for example, where Peter is from, uh, you know, we've already sold Scandinavia, so it doesn't really help, like, you know, it would have, whereas now, in some of these other, you know, festivals, it would have been harder to get into if, if it wasn't a premiere. But I mean, if any of you, you know, you know we are certainly, uh, you know, the movie is, like I said, going to be coming out in DVD and stuff. And if any of you are, are interested, you know, let me know after. We'll add you to an email list and let you know when it's available, et cetera. And I'm sure I can convince Branko to have it at the video store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I'm just checking. We should probably be wrapping it up because the next movie is starting soon. But thank you so much for coming. And, uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it.